Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to encourage those of you that have been painting a while to paint along with us. Today, uh, we are going to start uh, doing our Valentine roses with chintz. I'm going to work on the roses today. Let me just show you my final product. I did finish it yesterday. And uh, this is it. See the roses down here and up here? Okay, the way I did this was I did the roses, then I fired it because I didn't want to mess it up. And if you can see on the roses here, see how the little leaves and everything come off on there? I did that on the first fire. Then I took and put um, the background on, on the second fire and fired it. Then I put all these circles, see how tiny those circles are, on with a pen on the third fire. That took me three hours. And look at, this is not that big a piece. This is what, maybe a, a, a five by seven size. It's not a very big piece. And it took me three hours to put these circles on and I had to stop. So if you have eye problems, um, make sure that you wear have good lighting and that you, if you have the magnifiers, wear them um, or choose a small piece. So for when we're working on it next week and we're doing the circles, this is the size piece I have. And um, we'll put, I already have the rose on top. So I'll explain the last uh, couple of fires to you on this piece next week. I learned from a lady called Mae Perkins. It finally clicked with me. Uh, I don't, I, I learned from a lot of people, but nobody ever really explained it so I could understand it till I met May. May is now no longer with us, but this is a letter opener that I have, or a, a, like a bill holder, and these are all her roses. Now, you may say, and a lot of people did, they were very production, and yes, they are. She kind of repeats the same basic formula over and over and over again. She liked baby roses, but you can use this formula on anything. Now, another one of my favorites is Mary Petusky. This is what I'd ultimately like to be able to do. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I like her colors very much, and those are the colors I'm using today, but I don't get the pen work and the shadows on the leaves the way she does. Um, the other person that I really admire is David DeLong. He's down in Ohio. Um, I met him two years ago at the uh, Ohio uh, school and convention down there. And these are his roses. I bought these from him. And you can see now his roses are a little more chubby. See, they're real chubby at the base. Same thing with uh, this one here. But he does a beautiful job too, I think. So those are just some of my favorites that I wanted to share with you so that you could uh, get an idea. Um, colors we're going to use for today. Now, you don't have to use these colors. If you want a different color and you don't want it to come out like the green here, but I'll show you what colors I used for this, okay? Um, my colors for that were Pompadour, Deep Blue Green, or in my case, it's called Tahiti. I have a gray green, I have a leaf green, and I have a shading green. I like the blue greens, the, the greens that kind of have more blue in them. So that's, that's kind of what I like. And so that's what I'm using on this. Those are my favorite. Um, as far as brushes go, um, I, for the size piece, we're going to do a tea tile just to show you how to do the rows today. Um, because it's bigger, um, I would use, this is a, a quarter inch three quarters inch, I mean, three eighths inch, or this is a number eight for that. And of course your Pico Pay or an eraser. Um, I find the Pico Pay is a little more delicate than these, but you can use these if you want. Um, if you're doing the picture frame, I would start with, with this down here. I started with a, uh, a uh, an eight and then I worked down. My leaves, I think I did the leaves with a, a two or a four. So it just depends on the size of the rows you're doing, what size brush you should use. I think a big problem that a lot of people have with um, 
not being able to do roses is not using a large enough brush so that you get it loaded properly so that you automatically get that really nice um, shading from light to dark that gives you the base of your bowl and gives you the base of your, uh, the center of your rose so that your color comes out good. It also helps you with the petals. So I'm gonna show you how to do all that. So let's first talk about laying out your tile. Yeah, that's a little better. All right. In laying out my tile or my piece, I start, like we said the other day, I, I do the the different, here, I get that. We do the different, divide it into three each way. And then I want to get something in at least three of the four areas. I start out by just doing a circle where I want my roses, another circle, and if I want to butter something over here, and then I put lines in to show where I'm either going to put my leaves or maybe another bud, but it gives me some options. In order to load your brush, this is key, and I think it's something that most people miss. For this rose, I'm going to use a big brush, especially for you beginners who are, love to do roses but have never been able to do it. This is how I clean my brush really well, okay? Now, I'm going to load my brush for the center, which would be here. This is the heart of the rose, okay? Kind of right there. Then the bowl of my rose is going to be down here, the outer bowl. Okay, and then maybe for this one, I'll do um, a center here, and my bowl will come somewhat down in here, okay? So that should give you a pretty good idea. Now watch, I'm going to load my brush like this. I'm loading it so that it's thicker on one end than it is on the other. This is key. Let me show you on a tile here. You want it to come out like this. Do you see that? Light to dark. You're gonna lead with the dark end when you're painting. These are things that are so important, and I think if we don't share these things with people, they're gonna not understand how we get the color we do. So this is the darkest end, let me put a little more dark on there so you can see it. See the dark on there? Okay, and I'm going to start on my inner, the heart of it, let's call it, and I'm just going to make a few strokes like this. They're just coming down. I might even go back and add a few more on top of that, like that. Okay, that's the heart of my rose. Then I go back load my brush, and I come around this way. And now I'm leading with this edge, and I'm just trying to get the dark down at the bottom. You notice I'm skipping putting color in the middle there? That's intentional. The reason that's intentional is because, and now I'm smoothing it, is because I want to highlight right smack dab in the middle of the rose, at least on one, a little to one side or the other. If you don't put it in now, you're not gonna get it. So that allows you to see what I did there, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing up at the top. I'm gonna take my brush, now I've got the dark on this end, and I'm gonna start loading it on. But I'm loading, notice my brush is on a tilt. I'm loading it so that it goes towards the base. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush only because I want to make sure that I have white space on here so I get a little white on there too. And I'm going to load it again and again. I'm leading with this edge. I'm coming around and now I want this to be darker here because it's going to be behind this rose. I can tell. And you might want to fatten it up a little. It's up to you. Like this guy, I might want to fatten him up a little. 
It doesn't matter. It's whatever you prefer. Okay. Now I'm cleaning my brush real well because I'm going to load it flat, but just from down here. I'm not going up into the paint a whole lot. I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to pull. I'm going to start pulling here gently, gently. Pull a little here, gently. Gently. Now I'm going to start using the top of my brush to shape those upper petals. There. Do the same thing here. Pull it out gently. You can pull it out too far. That's fine. Better too far than not far enough. Cleaning my brush. Cleaning my brush. Now I'm loading again. This time I'm loading from the upper part. See there, the darker part of the paint? Because I want it darker on one end than on the other. And I'm going to start putting my petals in. So, I'm going to start with the upper right because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you probably start with the upper left. And I'm going to pull it. Oops, that's a little heavy. So I just pat it on my towel. I'm going to pull it down like this but pulling it towards the center, okay? Same thing here. Now you notice I'm going outside that line I made for myself for the circle. But up here, I do want to pull it down and kind of pull it all to a point because that's that petal up there. I'm going to get a little more paint on my brush. Okay. Got it? And let's do the same on here. I'm going to pull it down to a little point, kind of fan out. I, I do not use pinks when I paint my roses. And the reason I don't use pinks when I paint my roses is because I don't feel that the pink fires well. Pop fires great for me. And so I stick with what I know works for me. Whatever works for you, that's what you want. Now, see there, my brush is getting a little, so I had to go back and press it in order to flatten it out a little. And then up here, I'm just going to pull it down. Now, I know they look the same, right? And you go, okay, well, that's a production rose. And it is to some degree. But at least it's a rose, and it looks like a rose. Now, I'm going to come back down here and sort of do the outside of these a little bit. Pull this a little more out. Do the outside here a little. The outside here just a little, just to cap it off. I'm gonna put a little on here. I'm just doing the outside, just sort of smoothing it a little bit. Smoothing it just a little. And then I can pull the color back towards the middle a little. Okay, that's my basic rose. turned around so you can see it. That's my basic rose. All right. Now, if you're really comfortable with using turpentine, and by that I mean, here's, here's this, you're going to clean your brush and really, really press it, both sides, to get the turpentine off. Then you could do your cutting on your rose with the turpentine. Like this. Just pull it out. And maybe you want this one to come down here. You should have a picture of a rose in front of you so you kind of know what they look like and kind of how they do it. Most people tell me, and these petals down here probably need to be a little larger. Most people tell me you should think of it as if there's a, 
a spot right here that you're aiming all of these towards on both sides, okay? And you could do that up here a little. Maybe push a little bit of a petal right here. I like the way this one's going. There. Push a little around here. Now, I have a better luck using uh, my Pico Pay. But first, I'm going to add a little more. A little more outside to these guys because they just need to be bigger for me to work with them. They aren't big enough. There we go. Now, a lot of times what I do is I put the green behind it because then I have something to pull from. And you can do that. So, um... I'm going to take my gray green and a little Tahiti. I know you think, she's crazy. But these are the colors that I used on the first coat of that uh, chintz. And I do, I'm going to add a little shading green. Um, I've got to get it up higher on my brush. See that? And I pull, stop, Pull, stop. Now, I am guilty of making my leaves too small. I've been told that numerous times. And then I turn it around and I just pull it up. You can add a little red to it if you want to give it a little drama. But this is only the first coat. I'm doing this behind some of these so that I have a color to... Um, pull my outside petals from. So I'm going to come down here, maybe put one here. Bring it in a little. Oh, too dark. Uh, I hate when that happens. Let me take a little of the dark and put it up in here. There we go. And maybe I'll put another one here. And now I think I'll do one here at the bottom. And I pull it right up into my petals. You don't have to finish it off real well. You can if you want. You may want this one to have another one out here, that's fine. It's entirely up, up to you how you want to frame this. This is your piece. So now I'm going to just add a little green down in here. This is just for the heck of it. Not really anything in particular. I'm going to add some green here. I just simulate leaves. Make sure you leave. See, this guy's way too dark. There we go. And I'm going to do my leaves up in here, maybe. Okay. Um, probably going to put a different color on these next fire. There we go. There we go. There we go. And now I look at it forward. Decide maybe one up here. And I think that might be it. Okay. Okay. Now it's time to cut my roses. I am not comfortable doing it with um, turpentine. I'm just not. So I'm going to start doing it with my Pico Pay. I have pictures of roses in front of me so that I can see, and this would be much better if I could do it on my um, turntable. But first, I define the back. Now, I know there are lines here. I know that. Now, I will clean that up. 
but I'm just trying to define the way it comes down to the center. And I'm looking at examples of roses that I have in front of me so that I'm mimicking what they have. There we go. Then here, remember you're pulling towards this point. Here, You have to outline those, but then you might want to pull towards that point there. That is the point right there. And on this side, that is the point. Go around your petals. If you want um, like a turn back, you can do that with your, with your brush. But first, set up your petals. You want that to go more towards the point there. This one goes more towards that point there, but I don't want to cross my rows, okay? And that gives you the basic setup. And then I'm going to do this guy. I start with the top, so I face it towards me, and I start with the top, and I bring it around. And you can change up. You don't have to always do it the same way. You shouldn't always do it the same way. If you use more of the side of your pico pay, you get a slightly thicker um, line. Okay, so you're just basically doing the edges of it. Then you're looking for that point, which would be right here. And you're just pulling quickly towards that point. You don't have to come all the way around, and you should probably make it a little rounder like that. There we go. Okay. Now you notice I cut this off because I don't like it out that far. But that's just me. I'm just going to... Okay. So now I've got those two defined. And now I'm going to worry about the front. The front will do the same thing if you want to. You don't have to. You can leave them. You don't have to cut in in the front if you don't want to. Sometimes it looks better if you don't. It just depends what you're doing. But I think this one in particular could use a cut across the front. There we go. And hmm, I think this one, let me look at my samples here. I think it would do well with a cut here. Okay. And have it go behind here. All righty. All right. Those are just suggestions. So that's what I have so far. Now I have to go in and soften it. Now I'm going to use a smaller brush to soften it. A dry brush, if I have one, would be good. And I'm just going around and softening all those lines that I made. Here. I don't want that to go up that far. And then I'm just going to pull down a little. That will help soften those lines. This is a dry brush that I'm using. and just kind of going briefly over them. You can pull the color towards the center if you want. This one I don't want to do quite that much pulling towards the center, kind of liked it the way it was. Let me get that color back out there. Okay. Now you notice I'm not necessarily going in and softening the outer line, and the reason I'm not is because I'm gonna put some color behind this and that will take care of that. So here I'm just pulling it down, pulling it down. See this big mess here? 
I start out defining where I want the edge of the petal and then I just pull it down gently. You just have to soften things. You don't want all those heavy lines there. Here's a heavy line. I'm gonna turn it this way. Look at these lines right there. Do you see those? Yeah, I'm going to soften those, pull it this way. Oops. Now I'm going to take a little, clean my brush, and now it's a wet brush, and I'm going to pull this down like this. But up until now, it was a dry brush. I know I'm probably in the way there. Another thing you can do if you really want to make it um, fold over kind of is push. Let me show you here. If I take this little guy here and I just push him. Oh, we need more. I bring it down and I just push it. It kind of rolls it over. Or you could push it upwards and it'll roll it up. See that? That's all you have to do to get that those little rolls if you want them. You don't have to do them. Okay. Okay, there's my rows. And now I'm going to take a super big brush. This is a 10 or something, I don't know. It's my Filbert. It's my, oops, dirty Filbert. Um, and the Filbert brush I like because it seems like what it does for me is give me an extremely smooth background. So now I'm going to take my Tahiti, which is my, one of my favorite colors. And I'm just going to start putting a little on the edges and filtering it out just very lightly. Now, you know, if you're going to do chintz, and I'm not doing chintz on this one, but if you were doing chintz, one of the things you want to do, I'm doing little C strokes, is um, you only want to go to a certain level. You don't want to go all the way out unless that's the color you're going to use for your background. And you can... But um, you want to make sure that you stop because if you have the background, this is going to be a bud. I just haven't gotten to that yet. And I'm just taking, you can see how I'm grabbing my paint. I am doing it from the bottom. I don't want it to be too dark. I've learned and uh, Eloise will tell you it's not an easy thing to learn, that you need to paint lightly on the first coat, and you'll get a better result. Now, I'm going to take some of this here and just lay it up here. Now, I don't have a yellow on here, and I probably should. So, I'm going to pull some transparency, which, as of late, has been one of my favorite colors. And uh, the reason for that is because it's, um, it's a portrait color, and it tends to lend itself to actually doing exactly what the color says it is, the name says it is. It, very, it becomes very transparent, so you never really get too much yellow, but it's a, it's a pretty yellow. Okay. And I'm just going to play with the color on there, okay? Then you can go back with your other brush and just soften the edges. And I'm going to use turpentine now, and I'm going to go and just soften the edges. Oops, that might be a little too much. Let me, I shouldn't have done that one that much. 
So just pull it out. Okay. And anywhere else that you need to soften, this is the time to do it in the background. Otherwise, you won't get a chance to do it. You can also use the brush you just used if you want, like my Filbert, and um, just soften the edges a little. There we go. Yep. Yep, yep. You just don't want those hard lines if you can help it. Okay. You can also use a sponge. Oh, I have a sponge out already. This kind of a sponge where you put your finger in the middle of it, make a palm, and then just tap wherever you maybe have too much of a buildup because you want it to fade off. And then on this side, I want a little more of the Tahiti. That's it. Okay, now I need to put in my bud. I'll pull this over a little more. Okay, my bud I'm going to do with the same brush that I used before. I'm gonna use my quarter inch. We're gonna work on a bud. Now, I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty bud. You don't have to do anything fancy. See how I'm digging, put in my paint? Okay, I'm putting a lot in the middle. I want this bud to be somewhat opening, so you make a V, like this, down the middle. Mm -hmm. You can tap some of the paint off, and you want it to be a nice, round bud. You don't have to be real specific with these buds. You can pull it up a little this way, just like you did with the roses, just to give you some, there, give you a little color, okay? If you want to have it slightly open, you can take and add a petal by taking and adding some paint and just pulling a petal on this side and pulling a petal on this side. But remember, you're pulling towards that center section there. And then you can make it a little wider if you need to. Okay. Now I need smaller brushes. I have a four here that I like. Clean my brush, get my four out. And I'm gonna put, I'll take a little leaf green. I'm gonna put a little bit of um, a bottom on it, just like that. Side load on my leaf green. Okay, turn this and pull up. Oh, it should, I should pull out. Hang on like this. There we go. That's where it should go. And here, because you want it narrower on the edge. And if it's too light, that's fine. You can define it next time. You don't need to do more than that this time. I'm going to put a little more yellow up in here. Now, when you're doing your chintz, you don't want to do the yellow all the way around and all that kind of thing. You don't want to do that. I'm only doing it because this is not going to be chintz. This is going to be something else, okay? Mm, let's see here. Let me look at my rose here. I think this rose looks a little odd there. And I think I need a little... All right, final thing, I take this and I come down here. Just give it a little definition 
And you can define a little bit inside. There's some that's already there, so that's fine. Now, eventually, I will do other things up here. I can do shadow leaves on another fire and things like that. But this is what we have for the rose this time. And I will continue to go through and kind of define things. You can mix your colors, like right here. If the blue gets in, I don't care. Here, I still have a little bit. Here, I still have a little bit. You want to make sure you get rid of those rough edges. There we go. All right. So what we basically have just done is this. This is the top to my box that we're going to finish next week. So I would recommend you do a small box with a single rose on it. You could put a little bud on it. You could do whatever you want. I don't want to give you a, a tracing because my way of doing a rose is not the same way you do a rose. I want to make sure that you have the basics so that you can at least try a rose on your own. If you're doing the picture frame, you only need the rows two places, up in one corner and down in another, okay? If you're doing a little box like this or even a bigger box, you only need one rose. Now, you don't have to do it so you're going to have the circles around it. You could do it in the center of a box and then block out a circle around it that's just going to be white or a color and then do it. Alrighty, pick up those brushes, keep painting, and I will see you I next hope you take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.